Hello, my name is Keshwani. This K E S H W A N I Keshwani. We are here because we want to learn how to solve algebra word problems. Today we'll do problem number 107 and 108. Problem number 107, as you can see, is already on the blackboard. Let's take a look at it, shall we? We are told that a man a man rides. A man writes a cab for the first 40 kilometers. He writes cab for the first 40 kilometers of his journey. Then he travels a certain distance by train. And then he goes on and then 15 times as much. Then he travels 15 times as much, 15 times as far by air. So he travels 40 kilometers by, by cab. Then he rides a certain distance by train and 15 times that distance by air. This, his entire journey, if the whole journey was 1,000 km, how far did he travel by train? Let's find out, shall we? So what is our unknown here? Well, the unknown here is how far did he travel by train? Let's give this unknown a name. Let's give this unknown quantity a name. Here is our solution. So let, let T be the number of kilometers, number of kilometers, Traveled by train. T for train. Because that's our unknown. And what do we know? We know that he traveled the first 40 kilometers of his journey by cab. So this is by the cab. Then he took a train. How far did he travel by train? Well, let T let T represent the number of kilometers that he traveled by train. So that's how many kilometers he traveled by train. Then what happened? Once he traveled by train, he apparently arrived at the airport and he took a plane. A plane where he traveled 15 times the distance that he had traveled by train by the airplane. So here's the plane. Then 15 times as far by air. So 15 times as far, which is 15 times t. And that's all it is. That's how simple it is. And the, all of these three quantities better add up to his total journey. His total journey, we were told, is 1,000 kilometers. That's how simple, that's how easy, that's how straightforward it is. Subtract 40 from both sides. T, 1T, right here, 1T plus 15T is going to be 16 T equals 1,000 minus 40, which is 960. And therefore, T equals 960 divided by 16. How many 16 does 96 have? How many 16 does 96 have? How the hell do I know? I do know, I do know that 96 is made up of 80 plus a 16. 96 is made up of 80 plus a 16. And 80 we know is 5 times 16. 80 is 5 times 16. This is another 16, so 6 times 16, which means t equals 6. And then don't forget the 0 here. He must have traveled, he must have traveled 60 kilometers. He must have traveled 60 kilometers by train. That's all. Let's do one more, shall we? Let's do one more. <clears throat> we are told that if 210 is added, this is 108. If 210 is added to a certain number, to a certain number, the result obtained is six times the amount. by which the number exceeds 50. Find it. Find it should not have a question mark. Find it. That's it. Find it. Let's read the question one more time. It says that if we were to add 210 to a certain number, that certain number is our unknown. 
So that's our that's that's how we're going to define our variable. Let's give it a name. We're just going to stick with tradition and let's just call it x. Let the number be x. Let the number be x. If 210 is added to a certain number, let's do that. If 210 is added to a certain number, what happens? This quantity we are told, if 210 is added to a certain number, then the result that we obtain, right here is the result that we got. This result that we obtain is six times the amount by which the number exceeds 50. So here's our number, and give it a value if you like. Pretend, make up a, make up a number. Let's pretend that x is, let's pretend that x is 75. So if x happens to be 75, which we do not know yet, but let's just pretend that x is 75, how do we figure out how much is exceeds 50? If somebody were to come up to you and ask you, how much does 75 exceed 50? Of course, you're going to tell them right away, 25. 75 exceeds 50 by 25. How did you find 25? You simply took the 75 and subtracted 50 from it. That 75 is your x here. So how much does x exceed 50? x exceeds 50 by x minus 50. If x happened to be 75, it would have been 70 mi 75 minus 50. If x happened to be 51, how much does 51 exceeds 50? 51 exceeds 50 by 1. 51 minus 50. If x happens to be 100, how much does 100 exceeds 50? 100 exceeds 50 by 50. 100 minus 50, so on and so forth. What's the relationship between these two quantities? This is the amount by which it exceeds 50. This is the amount, the amount by which it exceeds 50. The amount by which it exceeds 50. That's right here. And we are told that if 210 is added to the number, if the 210 is added to a certain number, the result that we obtain, this is the number that we result that we obtain, we are told that this quantity is six times, six times this quantity here, this the amount by which x is 50. If you were to take six times that quantity, that's how much this quantity is, if you were to add 210 to it. That's all, we are done. The rest is very easy. The rest is very simple, very straightforward. It only takes a few seconds. The rest is simple. Open the parentheses. 6 times x. 6 times 50 is going to give us negative 300. Here we have 210 plus x. Now listen, if I were to bring, if we were to bring the 6x to this side, we'll end up with the negative 5x here. Listen carefully. If we were to bring the 6x to the left hand side, which is what the tradition dictates that we do, but we're not going to do that because if we were to do that, we're going to end up with a negative coefficient for x. I don't like dealing with negative coefficient of x. So instead of bringing 6x to the left hand side, let's bring the x to the right hand side by subtracting x from both sides. And let's bring 300 to that side by adding 300 to both sides. Now the positive x and the negative x is going to kill each other and we end up with 210 plus 300 is 510 which has to equal 6x minus x which is 5x which means x has to be 510 over 5 we know we know 510 divided by 10 510 510 divided by 10 would have been 51 of course we would have just knocked out the zero. 510 divided by 10 would have been 51, therefore 510 divided by 5 will be twice as much. It will be twice as much, 51 times 2, which is simply 102. X is 102. What's the last thing we should do here? We should verify our answer. The reason we did not verify our answer in the previous question, 107, because it was a very simple, very straightforward question. There was not much to ever verify. Let's verify it here. We could have verified the last problem by substituting the value that we got for the train and multiplying it by 15. That would have given us the amount that we traveled by air and then add 40, added 40 to it and that should have given us 1,000. I should have done that. I forgot. Let's verify it. So we're, we're claiming that the number that we're looking for is 102. Let's see if it makes sense. 102, we are told, this is our x. We are told that if we were to add 210, what happens if we add 210 to it? We get 2, 1, 3, 312. And we are told that this amount has to be 6 times the amount 
by which this amount exceeds 50. 102, 102 exceeds 50 by how much? 102 exceeds, let me write down this properly, a little bit of neat handwriting. 102 exceeds 50 by how much? 102 exceeds 50 by 52. And we are told in the problem that this quantity has to equal to 6 times that quantity. Let's find out what 6 times that quantity is. 52 times 6. That's 12, carry 1. 6 times the 30 plus 1 is 31. Oh, what do you know? It works. Our answer is correct. Our answer is correct because the amount by which the number exceeds 50, 6 times the amount, 6 times the amount that the number exceeds 50 does happen to equal to the same quantity as when we add 210 to it. Bye now.